Hi there, it's Mike Farrell here with Aspen iBiz. When the weather's nice, I like to dress casual and work outside. So I've just stepped out of my home office up here in the mountains of Colorado to bring you this update. I just had an article published about the transfer of wealth and power from the west to the east that is underway. This transfer is driving a lot of the churn and turmoil that we are experiencing on the financial landscape. This transfer of wealth and power is one of the topics in the five E's, and that's E as an echo, evaluation framework that I have previously introduced. I invite you to go to my blog for an overview and a link to the article describing the five E's framework so you can help understand and stay calm if you have this feeling that a financial riptide is pulling you out to sea. So, in my update for you today, I'm going to provide some examples of this transfer of wealth and power from the west to the east, specifically the Asia-Pacific region, more specifically, China. One, one area, one example to provide is the automotive market. In 2008, China and India passed the United States, the European Union, and Japan to become the largest auto market on the planet. And during this recession, the gap between these two marketplaces has widened. Meanwhile, here in the United States, the heads of the U.S. automakers were in Washington pleading with the U.S. government for a bailout. Very ironic, isn't it? Now to a second example, but in a related area, these cars do not operate in a vacuum. So the second area is the infrastructure associated with this mobility. The growing population of the East with their newfound mobility, they need roads, they need gas stations, repair shops, and gasoline. All this will create a demand for a lot of building materials and oil. Now, in order to have a context to understand what that just means, on average in the United States, each person consumes 25 barrels of oil. As of now in China, they only consume <clears throat> 1.5 barrels per person, and India's consumption of oil barely registers on the consumption scale. So as these economies grow, oil, will significant, oil consumption will significantly increase and the demand for energy products will skyrocket. As a reminder, energy is one of the five E's in the evaluation framework and I cover this in another article. Now for a third area, think about this. In the United States, there are over nine cities with a population of over a million. In China, but in the United Kingdom has two cities with a population over a million. In China, they currently have more than 160 cities with a population over a million. And they are still consuming over half the world's cement as they build out 97 new airports, 500 additional coal-fired plants, and 30 nuclear plants in the next decade. So as a result of this current and planned build-out, Imagine what it will take to house, feed, and cater to the needs of 1.3 billion people in China. No small task. Many agricultural commodities will be in demand. Items like soybeans and potash that's used to fertilize and increase the amount of food that can be obtained from any given acre of land. There will also be demand for copper, natural gas, uranium, bauxite for aluminum, and chromium and manganese, all very important for making steel. In one of my previous articles, I provided examples of alternative wealth creating strategies. These included non-dollar denominated investments that can be obtained in the currency trading. Another suggestion was emerging markets like the Asia Pacific region, China. Um, perhaps energy assets that are inherently useful like oil rigs, hydropower or methanol plants. Another suggestion was areas like precious metals water rights, oil, natural gas, potash mines, or gold mines. Things that are hard to build, difficult to replace, and costly to substitute. Definitely not financial stocks, definitely not retail stocks, and definitely not commercial property. I like a quote from Steve Forbes where he says that we need to obtain more financial education to understand, we need to increase our financial literacy to comprehend, and that will help us keep our eyes open to our search for alternative wealth creating strategies. I trust now your eyes are open for some alternative strategies to create wealth as I have just provided you justification for several of these areas. When you get a chance you can go to my blog and read about the transfer of wealth and power from the west to the east 
which is one of the five E's in the evaluation framework. And use this framework to understand what is going on out there in the changing business landscape to stay calm and help keep your eyes open to alternative wealth investment strategies. Also, there is a pointer in my blog to this recently completed article. I trust you will find it all very insightful. Until next time, I invite you to meet me on Facebook, follow me on my blog, watch me on my YouTube channel, and join me in my venture as I increase my financial literacy and pursue alternative wealth creating strategies and multiple income streams. The URLs for all these sites are listed below. Listed above. And as always, here's to your success.